G'day everyone, uh, my name is Nick Bowditch. Tonight I am going to share with you a free webinar that is about creating a community around you and your brand as opposed to just gathering customers and the value of both of those things. But why I think there's more value in creating a community and how you might do that um, going forward from today as well. So first of all, um, so what I might do is just go through some content and then at the end, if anyone has any questions or whatever, you can hit me up uh, in the comments here and I'll be able to see those and be able to answer some. But if there's not, I can just keep checking over, over the next couple of days and see if those questions come. And if they do, I can answer them. Um, so first of all, um, for those people who don't know me, my name is Nick Bowditch. I'm a storyteller. I'm a best-selling author. I am a coach of uh, other business uh, people, other business focused people. Um, I've come from startup land and I was able to build and sell um, a few tech startups before being recruited to work at Facebook where I worked for about three years and looked and managed uh, small business operations for Australia and New Zealand within the Asia Pacific uh, organization of Facebook. After that I then worked for a year at Twitter before then returning back into small business land working for myself again and now what I do is uh, coach other business people like you, um, as well as speak at different events and conferences around the place, write some books and stuff like that. You can find everything, all, all you need to find about me um, at nickboutage.com.au. So with all that in mind, um, I'm just gonna dive straight in. So why, why build a community? Why is, why is that of any benefit to you as opposed to just gathering customers and having a big customer database, right? And there's, there's one sort of main, not, not one reason, but one sort of example as to why building that community works really well and why I think uh, it's the best thing for us to do if we want to get a groundswell of um, supportive people behind what we're doing and what we're trying to build. Um, and, and, and it comes from this concept of the thousand true fans. And Kevin Kelly um, wrote about this concept of a thousand true fans, which I've spoken to a few people who are watching tonight probably about before and what it is is basically it basically says you don't have to be famous to have uh, to have followers behind you you don't have, have to be famous to um, be able to create something that generates enough revenue for you to live off basically and and the concept that Kelly talks about is a thousand true fans is all you need if, if those people are the absolutely true fans, which means, you know, those people who would buy anything you sold, <laughs> those people who will always come to see your shows, who always share your content on Facebook, you know, who are really right into what you do and supporting you in, in, in what you do. They are real, real, really, really, truly fans of yours and they're able to help and support you and embrace it enough to get other people on that bandwagon as well. Um, and, and that's why I think that's the basis of why I think this community building stuff is actually really important that, you know, sometimes we get distracted in, in, into thinking, you know, you need so many people to get behind you or you need, uh, you know, you need to be super famous to have a community around you. And those things just, I don't, I think just aren't true and they distract us from doing what we actually want to do and what we're actually able to do. And that is build a brand get people behind that brand and create a community of people who are supportive of you and what you do, but also connected to a lot of other people who might also benefit from supporting you and, and what you do as well. And, and Kevin Kelly talks about this thousand true fans being that, you know, if you, if, if somebody wanted to earn a hundred thousand dollars in a year, all you need is a thousand true fans to generate a hundred dollars only of profit per person per year and you make $100,000. Like that's, that's the simplicity of it really. But, but that's also kind of, kind of pretty switched on too, I think. So, you know, that, that's the basis of how I started to think about communities and how I started to think about, okay, how do I get, firstly, how do I get the thousand true fans? And then how do I really make sure they're getting their value out of me? And, and when I say thousand true fans, that's just an arbitrary number, right? It doesn't really matter. How many it can be? It could be ten. It could be ten million. It doesn't. It doesn't matter as long as you generate a community and 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 foster it within that community. Those people who will really be very very supportive of you um, for 
forever, really, and support what you do and, and buy what you make and, and, you know, really buying what you sell and, and really being part of the community behind your brand. That's why I think it works well. And I think that rather than having someone who's just intermittently or maybe just a one-off coming and buying something of yours, if you can generate a community and build a community around stuff, you can keep releasing stuff to them. You can keep them interested in what you do. You can, and it's not just about selling. It's about building a community of people who think like you, who think like supporters of yours. That's the real key here, right? So that's, that's what I'm trying to do, basically. Second thing I want to talk about tonight then is, well, how do you build it, right? And I've got a few little tips here to how, as to how to build the community, right? The first thing is be somebody who people want to support. You know, um, I'm, I'm very big on being your authentic self and representing your authentic self in business, even though, you know, even five or ten years ago that was not really what people would do. And, you know, you'd still sort of... Uh, refer to your little small business or sole trader enterprise that you have as, as some magnificently big conglomerate with millions of customers and staff and stuff. And, and you know, we still do that a little bit, but I, I feel like people support a small business because it's small. People want to support you because of you. They don't necessarily need the, that security blanket of having a big corporate conglomerate to support. And so I feel like the more... Um, authentic we are about that, the, the, the better a community will, will create, but also a better business will run and a better products will, will be able to bring to the market and stuff like that too, you know? I, I, think, that's, I think that's just as important, really. Um, so being somebody, people who, being somebody who people want to support comes in around the authenticity thing, but it also means that I think you have to be pretty kind of um, real and pretty raw sometimes as to as to what you believe, what you think, who else you support, who you're aligned with, who you're not aligned with um, in business and in life. You know, that stuff is, is really important. If you want to build this community around you, the people in the community need to know from the start that you're their guy or girl, that you're their person, you know, that you're the person that they really want to support. And then as long as you stay true to that, which is really just staying true to yourself, and you'll never, you'll never lose that. And that's how you create the thousand true fans. So that's the first thing, is just being somebody who people want to support. The second thing, which is kind of in line with that, is to be open. And, and when, I, when I say that, I mean, you know, give people a sense of who you are when you're not being the, the front end of your shop, you know, be giving sense of people, uh, giving people a sense of what is it like if we peek behind the curtain here, you know, what's the behind the scenes thing? What's, what's this community really doing for you? How is, how is me being part of your community changing your life? Like big shit like that, you know, like that kind of openness is actually really endearing and, um, and a really great way to build more and more and more people around your brand because people are like, you know what? I know that guy. I know what he thinks. I know where he stands. I know what he says is, is what he thinks. You know, that's important. And that actually aids the building of that community um, really well. The third thing then is to be inclusive. Now, I've got a, I've, I've got a pretty inclusive nature, I guess, in, in terms of humans. Um, I can be pretty open-minded and I can be pretty inclusive of people who are different and stuff. But in this community, building stuff, I, I think you've really got to push even harder on that inclusivity thing and, and, and know that if somebody wants to be one of your true fans and you're not diametrically opposed, opposed to them politically or ideologically or whatever, if, if you, you can see the good in them that they can see in you, that's great, right? Include them in things. Give people what they want to hear. Ask people what they want to see and what they want to be given in your community. You know, they're the, you're, they're the greatest barometer of, that stuff, a barometer of that stuff that you'll ever have. But we very rarely ask people what they want, even in these communities. And I think we are doing ourselves a disservice in that, right? So try and be as inclusive as you can of every single member. Really focus on your membership, right? Because they're the, they're the people who are mostly important in this. Like, it's not, it's not about you. It's really about them and bringing them the most value possible um, to 
that they, that they can drive from being part of your community, part of your, your brand. You know? Number four then is be where they are and participate, right? Now, I talk a lot about, you know, people ask me a lot, you know, um, if, I, if I have a certain amount of money and a certain amount of time or whatever, which is not very much at either, um, but I really want to market my brand online, you know, what, what, uh, what platform should I use? For instance, you know, and they want to know, should I make YouTube videos? Should I make Facebook? Should I get on Twitter? Should I do this or that? And I always say, look, the most obvious one really is to be on Facebook where we are tonight. Now, that's, that's just for sheer numbers, right? Just that, that's just if you cast the net over Facebook, you're going to get the most fish. But I also think that you should go fishing where the fish are. And for some of you watching this tonight, or whenever you're watching it, for some of you watching, you know, a lot of your fish will be on LinkedIn. A lot of them will be on Twitter. A lot will be watching video on YouTube, whatever it might be. So I, th I think you've really got to go where the fish where the fish are, right? That's the first thing. But the second thing is then find out where they are and really participate, really participate. So I, I would prefer you all to have your own forums, your own communities on your own website so that you're not beholden to anybody. You're not trying to, you're not having to worry about if Facebook's going to pack up tomorrow, you know, all of your membership goes with it, all of the hard work you've done gone with it and all that sort of stuff. You, you know that, you know, you own your, your piece of real estate on your website, for instance. But, you know, I still think you, you need like a Facebook group or you need some community that's online on a platform somewhere where you can interact with these people and continue to build your brand and, you know, do it in a really sort of proactive way by participating, not just answering questions, but asking questions, um, answering questions that have been answered, you know, like really let, let your members see that you're participating in this stuff, right? And then think about even off-platform how you do that, right? So um, if, if you know one of your members has a membership site or has a community of their own, jump in there every now and again and answer some questions as well. Share some stuff from there, you know, provide value. Because that sort of stuff is, is kind of an unspoken currency, which is actually really, really handy. And, and, and those people would be really, really grateful for it too, you know. So think about how you can do that. Be, go fishing where the fish are, but be where they're at. Like be where your people are at and participate. It's, it's not hard. It, it can take like two minutes a day, literally two minutes a day, just to fish through some things, say thank you, get back to people, whatever it might be, but be where they are and make sure the members see that you're where they are. The next one I've got then is to overproduce. Overproduce and focus on the members. And what I mean by that is give more than they can ever expect to get. Give more than they ever think they would get. Um, you know, be able to be in a space where you can um, provide more content, more exclusive content, more really special stuff that's aimed at your people and stuff that will be surprising that they're getting that, you know, give everything away. I'm a big believer in giving everything away. Give all your knowledge away. Because really, there's very few of us on earth who have something in our head, <clears throat> excuse me, that we could share. And if we, if we shared it, it would be the first time the world's ever heard it. You know, like we can get really precious about this stuff and think, I've got to hang on to that because it's really great knowledge. Well, I can tell you from my point of view, Quite honestly, everything in my head, you could Google it and find it somewhere else. I, I guarantee you that. But it's just about whether that stuff is shared and how it's shared that makes it seem more special or makes it seem more applicable or real or relatable or handy or whatever it might be. So I think I'm a big believer in just overproducing, pushing more and more stuff out than they think they're going to get under promise and over deliver, right? Really focus on the members really focus on what they want, what they're saying, what they're asking for. These communities aren't about you. This community is about your following, your thousand true fans, right? Really drum down on them and make that, as po make that as positive as possible experience for them to be part of your community. Because then you'll keep them and they'll refer you to other people and you'll be able to build and build and build on that, right? The next one is empowering your members. So, it's a really good idea as your, as your membership grows, as your community grows, start to create 
a citizenry, a constabulary in, in, inside your citizens almost, you know? Uh, administrators, moderators, content creators, editors, whatever you call them, people who are existing, who are one of your thousand true fans, but they're existing in your membership at the moment without a job and without any kind of empowerment. They're just really good for you and they're good to you. And it can be a nice little surprising thing for someone for you to ring them or speak to them or hit them up on a messenger or whatever it might be and say, listen, I thank you for doing this for me, what you do. I really appreciate it and I'd really love you to be able to, if you could moderate this community on Thursday nights between 6 and 8 p.m., if you could just get back to people, anything that's, that comes up during that time, I would be stoked, you know? Like, that, that's, you don't have to necessarily give these people remuneration for that or any kind of incentivize them in any way you know the people are people are, if they're your true fans that they'd be stoked to be asked probably so you know think about how you can empower people think about how you can gamify that even so that it produces some sort of competition between two of your true fans and and gets them to be more and more involved you know um you're not trying to game them so much as just trying to repay their loyalty and and um and be grateful for it you know show some gratitude for that by by empowering the people who are be empowering you more or less right and then the last thing i've got here that in in the how-to part is i think is the most important and that is to lead with kindness you know whether it be who you include in the group or who you don't include in the group how you let group members speak to each other how you let the community speak to itself how you let the world speak to the community how you speak to the members and how the members speak to you, I think is really important to come down to that, just leading with kindness. You know, is this the kindest thing I can do here for this person, for this community? Um, it sounds really woo-woo and lefty, I, I get it, right? I don't care. Because it's actually really helpful in terms of long-term survival of your community, as well as uh, in that empowerment of the members thing which we spoke about before. You'll never lose business by being kind. You will only ever gain it. And that is even more true in a community or membership point of view when there's 100,000, 10,000, whatever many people you want to attract into your community. If you lead with kindness, so will they. And that's a really, really important little free bonus you can have from these communities. So basically, that's the kind of point form. And this is in the, in the description of the video as well. You'll see later. But... You know, that's the, the seven or eight things which I think help in building a community. And I just want to just focus really quickly this last little bit on three things that I wouldn't do, three things that I think is not the way to build a community. And I don't want to focus on the negative stuff at all, but I just think this is, I see this stuff happen, right? And this is, this is what people who are generally trying to build a membership or generally trying to build a community, sometimes they make one of these three mistakes and it bites them on the ass and it can kill the community really, really quickly. Excuse me. So the first one is the obvious one is people who just do nothing but hard sell. So you've gathered this community around you and rather than giving them anything, all, you, all you're trying to do is just take, you know, now that's not to say you can't sell to your community because after all, that is one of the reasons why you're building it. Right. But if, you, if all you do is ask for money and all you do is try and sell product to them, they're going to leave quicker than anything. Now, if they, if they receive from you, if they're getting information, if you're giving stuff away, if you're being kind and, and giving away stuff that you find, even if it's just sharing something on Facebook, you've seen somewhere else on Facebook in your Facebook group, that kind of thing works really well, you know, like, and it's, it's so easy, it's so simple. Because if you can do a lot of those and then every sort of eighth or ninth, there's no real number, but every sort of, every so often, you jump in there and you say, listen, I'm selling this too, by the way, if anyone's interested, this is the product, this is the price, you know, whatever it might be. However you do sales, I'm a bit shit at sales, as you probably just heard a second ago. But, um, you know, that's the way to do it is, is not just go for the throat all the time, but, but, but be able to provide something, bring something to the table before you start asking for money or asking for them to buy and sell your products, right? That's number one. Second one is don't try to be someone else. You know, I see this all the time um, where people are building a community or a Facebook page or even just building their Instagram account or whatever and, and you can see 
even with a relatively layman's eyes, you can see they're just emulating someone else. They're literally copying the hero, probably, in this space and just trying to be them. And, and I think it's sad because the world doesn't need two of them. It needs one of you. You know, like I, I think that we can get into that trap of trying to be somebody else um, way too easily because you're never going to be somebody else better than they are, all right? Nor are they going to be better at you than you. So I just, I just think it's really much more important to be able to be the best version of yourself, build the community that you want to build and, and attract the members that you want to attract. You know, like if you try and be somebody else who's also in your market, you might be the market leader or whatever, then you're going to attract their customers. And maybe there's some crossover between the two, but there's probably a lot of differences between you and that market leader that, that means that your following is different also. And I, I think it's a shame. I think that you're doing yourself a little bit of a discount if you're, if you're not trying to just be the best version of yourself, if you're really trying to be the second best version of someone else, which kind of sucks. So, you know, that's what, that's, I think, the second thing I wouldn't do is try to be someone else. And then the third thing is, I see this often too, where people create a community and then they give too much too soon. Now, I don't mean that they've given away too much information or they've been too kind or they've given away too many downloads or they've shared too much content. That's not what I mean. But I mean, if over the space of, say, a six-month period and they start here and they're Boom, 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 boom. Like they're fucking throwing information out and it's great and the community's loving it and it's really vibrant and it's really you know engaged and stuff like that and then two months later they're like Ugh, I'm a bit bored with that or I've got to go on holidays now or you know whatever it might be and it dries up and and the problem with that is that when the community when the stuff dries up in, in the community it dries up um, when you sorry when your effort in the community dries up the community dries up. So just, just be conscious of that, you know, giving away too much of your time and your effort and your spirit, too much of you in that first moment because you can't necessarily pace yourself out of that. So that, that's what I think is, and I think, you know, we all kind of make that mistake a little bit sometimes of getting excited about something and like, fuck yeah, this is what I'm going to do and, and you give away heaps of content and you're killing it and then three weeks and you're like, fuck, I'm exhausted. And, uh, you know, and I'm a bit over it now and it dries up and then the community dies as a result of that. So just be aware of that, you know, just giving too much away too soon. So the three things I wouldn't do is um, uh, giving too much away too soon, try to be someone else. And I think what the other thing was, uh, oh, do nothing but hard sell. <laughs> it's pretty funny that I can't think of that. Um, because, you know, they're the three ways that will kill your community really, really, really quickly. Okay, it's a lot of information which I've just spat at you. Um, but I, before I just check if there's any comments or questions, I, I'd be remiss not to talk about my own community that I, that I have built and am building. Um, if you go to my website, nickbarish.com.au, you'll see in the menu you can click on the superhumans. Superhumans is our little online community of, of superhumans, um, people who are like me who uh, have some little mental uniqueness or some point of difference in how we think um, and how we don't think that is a character defect of ours, it's not a flaw of ours, it's actually a superpower of ours, which makes us superhuman. And there's, um, there's about just under 300 people in that community now, which I'm pretty stoked with. They're all from all over the world too, which is cool too. And uh, hopefully a lot of people are watching tonight if you are, you know, superhumans. Um, but, but that's a really great community that I'm just starting to build. And if you, if you go to my website, nickbowditch.com, you click on the superhumans in the menu, read the first little bit and see if it's for you. If it is, I'd love to have you on board and part of that community. I, I'd love it. You can see everything that's included in there. I'm not going to sell it. I, I feel like it sort of sells itself if you're the right person for it. So that is you go to my website, nickbowditch.com.au, and then click on the superhumans in the menu, and you can see everything that is offered each month in that and, and see if it's for you. Okay, so I'm going to have a look uh, through here. Oh, wow, there is a lot of comments. Okay, so um, rather than trying to measure through all that, if you've got anything you'd want to ask right now, please ask it right now and I'll, I'll find it and see it right now. Um, otherwise, I will check, keep checking back on this every sort of uh, 
for the next kind of day or so. So if you have any questions and you've watched this, even if you haven't watched it live, and if you watch this and it comes up and you want to ask me a question further down the track, I would love to um, answer that and I'll stay as committed as, committed as I can to that for you as well. Um, yeah, there's a few people there that have said stuff, which is nice. I'll get back to you after this. But uh, let's, I, I might just cut it off there because it's, it's night time and I know that you're probably halfway through getting kids down and cooking dinner and whatever else you're doing in your life if you're in this time zone with me. Right now in Sydney, it's 8.30 p.m. So I might leave it there. Other than to say that, if you have any questions, please pop them in the question in the comments below and I will get back to you um, in the next over the next day, something like that, if that works out for you. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just a quick recap will be of the, of the stuff that I've talked about. This recap is in the description now. So you can see the things that I think you should not do and the things I think you should do on, a way, on the way to building that community of your thousand true fans and remember the thousand true fans thing means that you, anybody can build this community around their brand you don't have to be famous and you don't need a thousand a thousand is an arbitrary number all you need to do is find people who will support you no matter what you know and then and then be able to build a community of other people like them who can see value in you too and build your brand accordingly out of that you can end up with Two things is in small business or in business generally is a database of fans or a database of customers or a community of customers or of people who are like you, like-minded and on the same journey as you. And I know which one I'd much rather every single time is, is that community. And I'd rather that for you too. So that's a lot of content in half an hour. I get that. Um, uh, hopefully you've got right to the end or if you're watching in a little bit, you've got to the end now. Um, please pop anything, any questions you have in the comments there. You can hit me up um, directly on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Nick Bowditch, or you can see everything you want, including the membership, uh, the super, uh, Superhumans membership stuff on my website, which is nickbowditch.com.au. Okay, otherwise, thank you guys. Have a great night wherever you are, or day, wherever you are, depending if there's this. I know there's Superhumans in Europe who are probably watching now, so... It's a weird time for you, but um, otherwise, thank you very much for your support of me and being part of my community. I, I, I really am genuinely grateful for that, and I hope you have a really great night or day wherever you are going forward. All right, thanks very much, guys. See ya.